Now in part C, we're asked to estimate the mean, which I'll call mu, and the standard deviation, which I'll call sigma. Okay. Now, how do we estimate the mean? Well, you should know that the mean is the sum of the frequencies times the x values divided by the total frequency. And we're given that the total value of sigma fx okay, is equal to 3550, 3550 then, and the total frequency is the number of commuters which was 120. So if you do that sum on a calculator you'll find that you'll get 29.583 and so on and rounded up to three significant figures that's going to be 29.6 to 3SF. When it comes to calculating sigma you should know that this is the square root let's just mark that in of sigma f x squared divided by the total frequency sigma f minus the mean which we had over here mu squared. So all we need to do is just fill this in we're told that sigma f x squared is 138020 we know that sigma f the sum of the frequencies is 120 we have the mean over here. Let's make sure you use the unrounded value there. So we have minus 29.583 and so on, all squared. Okay, we'll just extend that. And what does that equal? Well, again, just do that on your calculator. And again, you should find that you get 16.5829 and so on. And rounded to three significant figures, that comes to 16.6 to 3SF. Now in part D we're asked to calculate the coefficient of skewness and we're given a formula to work that out. Okay, So just finish writing this in, coefficient of skewness. The formula is 3 times the mean, okay, and we have got the mean, make sure you use the unrounded value, that's 29.583 and so on. Then it is minus the median, so the median was the value we got in part B, and if you take that, the unrounded value, you should find it was 26.709 and so on. And this is all divided by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is this value here, so we just pop that in, 16.5829 and so on. And again, if you work this out on your calculator, what you should find is that you get 0 0.5199 and so on, which to three significant figures is 0 0.520 to 3SF. All right. And in part E, we're asked to, to basically and in part E, we're asked to state whether or not the value of this coefficient is consistent with our description then in part A. And you can see that because this is positive, the coefficient of skewness is positive, then this does agree. Okay, So it is consistent. And we've got to give a reason, and I would say since our value here, 0.520, is greater than zero. And that brings us to the end of part E.